I've been using the Sigma 18 to 35 for a while now, and I recently got the 24 to 70 f2.8, also Sigma. I hope this video can help you to decide if you should get the same lenses or if you have to choose one, which one you should get. Let's get straight to the point. If you are always filming in indoor environments, let's say a room or a building, I will recommend the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 because of the wider angle. Sometimes you just cannot back up if your back is already against the wall. But if you are always filming outdoor with a lot of space, I will pick the 24 to 70 because of the longer zoom range and the compression from the longer end. One thing I want to mention first if you are more into videography, the Sigma 24 to 70 f2.8 is almost par focal, but the 18 to 35 is not. Par focal means when you manually focus on something, no matter if you zoom in or out of the lens, the subject will stay in focus. This is very handy for videos because zooming in and out is a very common technique in filmmaking and par focal photo lenses are very hard to find. I know you will probably think that I'm so dumb to compare two lenses at very different price point and focal length, but I'm just trying to show you the differences if you can only pick one of these lenses up for multiple purposes. Maybe picking one of them will be a better investment than the other. So yes, I know they are completely different lenses. Keep in mind, I'll be showing you the differences between these lenses on a crop sensor camera. I know the 24 to 70 is a full frame lens, but it can be used on a crop sensor camera as well. And the 18 to 35 will still be cropped even if you use it on a full frame camera. That means the full frame equivalent focal length will be around 29 to 56 millimeter and 39 to 112 millimeter for these lenses. Basically, they will be much narrower compared to a full frame length. Before we compare them, just in case if you are going to get both lenses, the zoom and focus ring will definitely confuse you. First, the zoom and focus ring on both lenses are flipped, but that's not the worst. The zoom ring on the 18 to 35 goes to the right to zoom in, and the one on the 24 to 70 goes to the left to zoom in. What were they even thinking when they made the lenses? They are literally the same generation and from the same art series. Trust me, I'll never get used to it. Okay, let's compare the lenses in more detail. The Sigma 18 to 35 is super popular because of its fast, constant aperture at f1.8. That means it should be able to capture more details in low light situations. Here's a side by side comparison between the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 and the 24 to 70 f2.8 in the same environment. I'll show you with different camera settings and I will let you be the judge. Keep in mind, I'm not going to do any post editing, including denoising and color correction, so you can see when I need to crank up the ISO for the slower lens if there's any color shifting or not. Whenever I'm working on a project, I usually don't need to get the lens to shoot at f1.8. I actually always stop my 18 to 35 down to about f2.8 because I don't need the image to be so bright. Keep in mind, you don't have to film everything with a super shallow depth of field. Having background so blurry that you cannot even see doesn't mean the video is more cinematic. Also, f2.8 will definitely be easier to focus when you are manually focusing. Talking about blurry background, another popular reason for people to pick up the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 is the bokeh that it creates, which again, it's related to the faster f1.8 aperture. When we compare these lenses at the same focal length and distance from the subject, for sure the f1.8 lens will create bigger bokeh balls and blurrier background. Here's how they look like side by side. But don't forget about the compression when you zoom in on the lens with the longer focal length. 
when both lenses are zoomed in at its max focal length, 35mm for the 18-35 and 70mm for the 24-70, you will get a much more compressed and blurrier background with the 24-70, even when it can only go up to f2.8. To be honest with you, the compression of the background and the isolation of the subject when using a longer lens is my personal favorite way to direct audiences' eyes. That's why I always try to use a longer focal length whenever I can. But in some cases, for example, for an establishing scene, I will do it with a wide angle. If you're wondering about the sharpness of these lenses, don't worry. As usual, Sigma lenses, they are very sharp even wide open at f1.8 and f2.8. Of course, the corners are going to be soft when they are wide open. So again, stop them down if you want the corners to be sharper. I personally never look at my footage with a 10x zoom to pixel peep the corners, but here's an example just in case if you're wondering. Another important thing to keep in mind when you are trying to decide which lens to get or use is the distortion, not only on the edges, but more importantly on the subject's face. A shorter focal length or a wider lens like 18mm will tend to make the face of the subject rounder, and a longer focal length like a 70mm will tend to make the subject skinnier. Since the 18 to 35 is a crop sensor lens, that means when you put these lenses on a full frame camera, they will cover a similar range. The 18 to 35 millimeter lens will actually be within the 24 to 70 millimeter range with a faster f1.8 aperture, just in case if you have a full frame camera already. Keep in mind, although a wider lens will make the subject rounder, it will also give a more immersive experience to the audience they will feel closer to the subject and to the scene when you're using a wider lens. One major selling point of the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 is the built-in image stabilization, which the 18-35 does not have. The lens image stabilization does make a huge difference, especially when your camera does not have image stabilization. Here's an example of me trying to keep the camera as stable as possible just by hand-holding it. When you are at the wider end of the lens, the shakiness might not be too obvious, and the lens image stabilization on the 24 to 70 might not be as helpful. But when you zoom in on the lens, you will notice how big of a difference the lens image stabilization is making. The image stabilization of the 24 to 70 is pretty good for slower filming movements. When you are trying to move the camera faster, the image stabilization will actually jump and make the video worse than without the stabilization. So keep that in mind. Just don't pan the camera too fast, thinking that the stabilization will magically correct it for you. Now let's talk about the handling of these lenses. They are both very heavy, like very heavy as a photo lens. I really like the build quality of Sigma lenses because they always feel like a tank with an almost full metal construction. Weight-wise, the 24-70 is about 35 gram heavier than the 18-35, but it feels better in the hands because it has a different weight distribution. When you have the 18-35 on the camera, it feels more front heavy because it is longer than the 24 to 70 when it is not zoomed in. The 24 to 70 feels more center weighted when it is on the camera, which makes it a little bit more comfortable than using the 18 to 35. It should be easier to balance on the gimbal as well, just don't zoom in. The reason why you don't want to zoom in on the 24 to 70 when it is on a gimbal is because it extends when you zoom in. It will most likely throw your gimbal off balance unless you have a super strong gimbal that it can take on the sudden change of weight distribution. I'll definitely test it out on my gimbal. Another thing you might need to consider is the filter thread size. It is 72mm on the 18-35 and 82mm on the 24-70. to 70. 
I think 82 millimeter is almost the max filter size for photo lenses. So if you don't already have 82 millimeter filters, you might need to get new filters just for the 24 to 70. That's why all my filters are 82 millimeters just in case if something like this happens. That was close. Just in case if you are wondering, the front of the 24 to 70 does not rotate when you zoom in and out. So you can still use matte boxes that attaches directly to the lens. Oh, by the way, the autofocus on these lenses is fast and quiet. So don't worry too much about that. I think that's it. Those are my thoughts on the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 and the 24-70 f2.8. To be honest with you, if videography is what you do for a living, try to save up money for both lenses because they do cover different purposes. If you can only get one lens right now, get the Sigma 18-35 because although it might look different, you can still try to get closer carefully when you have a wider lens, but not the other way around usually. <laughs> Getting the 24-70 will definitely be a great next step and addition. Let me know what's your favorite lens in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Keep in mind, you don't have to film everything with a super, super, 